Hello, everybody. I'm Rex Sykes. You know me. I'm the author of Life on Your Terms. RexSykes.com is the website. And I am here on a special event with a special guest on a special day. And uh, we just kind of decided to do this spontaneously. The gentleman that you see wearing that impressive cap is Grand Master Eric Lee. He's known as the King of Kata. He's done over 150 movies as a choreographer, stuntman, actor, producer, you name it. I've been blessed to know Eric since about 1978. We were in acting class together in Los Angeles with our acting coach, who's still an acting coach, Eric Morris. He's been on my show, All Things Rex Worldwide. But I'm here right now with Mr. Eric Lee, Grandmaster Lee. How are you today, sir? Good. Very good. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm so thrilled that you're here. I want to tell the audience just a little bit that um, Eric was kind enough to pick me up uh, uh, just a few days ago in his car, drive me to Chinatown and take me out to lunch. We had a fabulous lunch, got to share and have you know good conversation, but introduced me to some foods I hadn't ever sampled before. And then took me around Chinatown and pointed out Bruce Lee's statue where he posed looking like a martial artist. I posed looking much more like a clown. And uh, <laughs> it's not true. I look like a clown. You look like a martial artist. <laughs> well, I want to point this out right away, and we'll talk about this in just a minute. This is a book, and oh wow, he was he was kind enough to autograph it for me. I will uh, turn for a second. You won't be able to read it, but I have Master Lee's autograph, and to me, but this is an amazing book, and I, I've just started it. I'm about third chapter, and I love it. I delight in it, and you need to get it. It is the journey of an artist. And it is by Grandmaster Eric Lee. And uh, and be sure to get this book. You can get it at Amazon. And uh, it's worth the read. It's, it's... Yes, sir? In Border, Border Bookstore and Walmart. And mainly, easy, easy one to get is from uh, Amazon. So it's where but... books are sold. And they can get it from Amazon. That's awesome. And if you look behind... Uh, Grandmaster Lee, you can see some of the accolades, awards, uh, photographs, certificate, whatever, belts. <laughs> uh, you are a man of many impressive talents, and uh, you're older than me, but you look younger than me. And uh, I'm, I don't I'm know about that. Uh, <laughs> look doesn't mean anything, it's the no. inside. By the way, is that your logo on your cap that you designed? That you made? that is my logo, and uh, the, the jacket I'm wearing is uh, designed. Uh, I also create things. This is, may I take it up? I show oh, you. Sure. Can you see? Okay. Uh, the double dragon, which we have a script, and uh, we're going to make that into the film. That's a double dragon. I'm going to go behind the jacket. Right here, you go. There you go. Gorgeous. Double dragon. So, anyway, uh, I have a list of the things I'd like to share. Yes. Uh, our audience, I taught martial arts for a long time and I stopped teaching about 15 years ago. But uh, you can call, I like, I'm a creative artist. Um, you can say that I'm more like a Renaissance man uh, because I like everything, basically. Okay. Am I, can I start talking? Oh, please, please. Okay. Please. I like to, uh, some of the interests, uh, I like people, number one, okay? Health, very important. Our health is our well. And of course, if you into entertainment or your business, your network is your net worth, okay? Um, my basically, whether I knew or not in the past, and I did a competition, did a lot of demonstration, but I was live. I was born in China and live in Hong Kong. And I saw Queen Elizabeth II when she was 30 years old. And then uh, my father happened to be a martial artist and he owned business, uh, herb shops and things. So we have lots of uh, people working together, doctor, cook, and uh, herbalist, and uh, I happened, my uncle happened to have a theater, and so I watched a lot of movies and uh, black and white kung fu movie, and I saw a lot of Western movie as well, like John Wayne, you know. So uh, my idea, because before me, uh, I was in the dark. I didn't know how to do all these things, 
but I was inspired by the Kung Fu people and the, the actors, whatever. And then my father happened to be a martial artist. And then, and then um, without knowing that, that's my, I was watching my father train when I was two. I'm 77 now. Okay. So my idea is in the past, because I changed my focus a little bit, I was, my thing is inspire before I expire. I, we will expire because after all, we're only camping here, right? And uh, hopefully a long time. Um, that, that That is uh, what I know because we learn how to hit. I was in, I w also live in Oakland, as you know, Hells Angel and and uh, Black Panther was in Oakland. It's kind of rough, you know, rough area. So I left Oakland in 1976 and moved to LA, but I did live in Central America, went to Chile with Mr. Ed Parker, which is Elvis Presley's instructor and bodyguard. There's one person uh, with Elvis is still living. His name is Dave Pepler. He lived in Texas and he's 80 some years old. And then so, my idea is uh, to take care of temple, which is our body. Our, your body is important, so we have to take care of that. Of course, we want to have a balance. My idea is yin and yang. I do like many things. If you don't mind, I talk about it. And then I like to paint. I like to sing. I'm with, matter of fact, I'm going to, uh, I record 40 songs already. I have some song here I'm going to play. And you can listen to it. Your audience can listen to it. Hopefully, they like it. If they don't, they don't like it, and tell them, uh, tell their friends they don't like it. I have no. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's nothing. Not, when well, you, we teach martial arts, we are basically teaching ourselves. What I what I appreciate about you is, you know, we met obviously as actors, but you do paint, you do calligraphy. You've mastered a number of different martial arts styles, which I want to talk about too a little bit later. But and now you're singing and playing uh, instruments and different things. So, you know, your life is an exploration and a journey and you do what you want to do and you do what you want to, to do to enjoy. But I, I also love what you said is that, you know, I love that we're camping here. That was a great way it's to nice. put it. Yeah, because it's true. We are. We're, we're journeying through. We get to camp and stop for a little while and then we go on in another way. And before you expire, you'd want to inspire and that you do. And you do it through your book and you do it through your work. You do it through your arts. You've done it through your movies and you do it through your friendship with the people that you know. So that's really pretty awesome. When Thank it, you. I, I like uh, basically everything. You know, your um, we have a lot of propaganda going on on TV. Uh, let me tell you a story. My other friend, his name is also Rex, same <laughs> as you. And uh, he was working for a small TV station, and then uh, he and then when he came came back one day to cover the report and uh, the news, the boss told him, uh, "What you got today?" He said, "Oh, nothing much going on today." The boss told him, "You better make something up, otherwise you can go home today." <laughs> so he had to make something up. So. A lot of things on TV or people here and they inherit that that thinking and they believe it. And then uh, so many of them are true, but they exaggerate quite a bit sometimes. So that's all I expect. So you have to be careful what we're thinking about, how we interpret the information we got. So um, most people worry a lot, mm -hmm. something, okay? Whether we worry or not, it's going to happen. So I don't worry about that. Okay. If I'm going to be here for a short time, that's okay. But if I'm going to be here another 50 years, wait, then we can do more. But due to the fact that we are still here, so we've been blessed. Okay. And then uh, there are many journey. Everybody walk in different shoes. We all have ex different experience. So, I re so when I listen to somebody else talk, about their life story. I listen. So just because I do what I do, it doesn't mean that's what they do. So I'm a student of learning about what they do. So I'm trying to keep an open mind. So therefore I don't get bored. So a lot of, some of the people, 
they think what they do is the only thing in the world, but it's not true because there's so facet, so many things going on in the world. We we only know a little bit, even though we're giving 100 years on this lifetime, it's nothing. That's not enough. So anyway, uh, you want to ask me a question? Well, yeah, I, I do. I, I want to say there's there's an interesting aspect of what you just shared that I think we share in common. You know, I've done seminars around the world and people have flown in from all around the world to do workshops with me as they have with you, you know, and with your movie career and everything. And the interesting thing is, is that I've even though I'm imparting what I know and what I practice to them, that's why they came to me like you teaching martial arts. I have all these people. You have all those people in your in your in your dojo, in your in your in your teaching. And I have in my workshops. Uh, people who come from all different walks of back walks of life and have different talents and skills that I may never ever be able to do. So if you don't listen to them, if you don't get to know who they are, you miss all the wealth of 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 opportunity and experience that that surrounds you when you're in a, in a setting. Even though they're learning from you, you can be learning from them. That's and right. that to me, that to me is the most exciting thing about being able to share, being able to whatever it is. So with with you and and you said health is important, you know, and health is our wealth because without it, you know, what do we have? Uh, and you talked about balance and you talked about thinking. So if you were to if somebody were to come to you and say, you know what, I'm really screwed up and I'm worried and, and you know things are gonna happen, what might you what might be the first kind of simple steps that one could take to start to get control of their experience or or allow their experience, you know, so that they stop worrying and start living more fully what what where 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 do you begin is it with an energy with a thought with a body what what how do you begin your your process as you know worry is a habit right okay so like i said before things will the only thing happen in the world uh life is always under construction we are perfectly imperfect so it's all depending on our attitude. So it's perfectly imperfect. So it's okay. So things will happen. The only thing permanent in the world, as you know, is changes. And nothing is going to be permanent. We'll get old, we look different. Somebody born and somebody died. It happens all the time. So life and death is part of life. Excel. So that is, uh, I don't really, whether you were not, it's going to happen. Like I said before, you know. So I, I changed, it's, it's very hard to understand that the big thing is to be able to, not to worry, that means letting go, okay? If if you worry, you're gonna have, a habit is in your life, you're gonna carry that all through your life. So when you, we change that attitude, it changed. Um, one of the things it's hard to do Learn to love what you hate. That's a big one. That's a hard to do. I look at my hair. You know, I have hair, but I, you know, it's not as much. And I say, I don't like it. I say, and I say, I like it. It changed my attitude. So therefore, my hair and my my feeling, my attitude have changed. So therefore, uh, feeling for healing, right? After all, when you feel it's going to create a, your state of mind, therefore it's your life. So just accept what you what you don't like, and then they back off, and then it. We are the one that create that symptom, not somebody else. The most difficult thing to me, um, for average people, is to conquer yourself, not outside. Outside is easier. Yourself, your thinking, your world. Watch how you interpret, like your book here, life, your term. So how you change, how you deal with things, your mental outlook, okay? If you're happy, uh, you are in paradise, it's a, state, it's a state of mind and causing, it's coming from you. It's not from somebody else. You know what, I, I love what you said um, earlier because it's, it's if someone's going to overthink, they're going to overthink. And and the the easy part of what we do and what you do and what we can learn 
is is the, the simple thoughts sometimes make an incredible difference. You know, it's like a bumper sticker. You see it and you remember it forever. If you can remember what you just said, you know, if it's going to happen, why worry about it? It's going to happen anyway. So right. worrying about it, it's not going to change it. It's not going to make it better. It's not going to make it worse. It's going to happen no matter what. Yeah. And it may or may not happen. But the point is that that thinking about it and and getting screwed up and in a state of stress isn't gonna isn't gonna make a difference. And I and and if a person could get that. And go, you know, this bad thing is there. Then you added, I learned to love what you hate. Now, when we first met 50 years ago, we both had more hair. Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> we both had more hair. But you're like, you know, I, you know, I say, I don't like it. Now I say, I like it. I mean, in other words, the it, it, you can go through life, you know, grabbing roses and just feeling the thron thorns and, you know, hurting your hand. Or you can go through life smelling the roses and enjoying it. But it's going to have both. It's going to have the flower and it's going to have the thorns. So what you think about really matters. And then, I mean, I, there's such a beauty of what you said, because it is about self-management. You said, you know, the outside can take care of itself. The the really true thing is to, to master yourself. You know, to yeah, we have to have the tool to deal with the things that we, in, when we're younger, well, when I was younger, I didn't have enough tool. So the the philosophy, the way we think, is the tool. That is, so we have to have the the tool to deal with, because the tool is in you. But sometimes you have to throw the tools away to get new tool that works. So often is, uh, uh, as I saying, you know, your right side if your creative left side. Is your you know more of a business or logical thing, but to balance, I happen to know the technique. I don't want to talk about here because I'm liable. But you, we need to have both sides of the brain, introverted and extroverted balance. Okay, so you can be introverted. Okay, um, if you're a writer, you you are creative, you may do that, but uh, also. Because you are a writer, you have to be able to write. So, you know, if you just exercise all day long, let's say you want to become Olympic champion, your focus has to go there, but it doesn't make you somebody else. But you are champion of what you do. You're a top athlete. Okay. So okay. whatever, we are the product of our own environment. What you love is what you're going to get. And then, like, I will, I'm playing the guitar right now. I sing. So that's my challenge. Okay, I can sing, but also to play the guitar and sing at the same time, not everybody can do that. So that I like it, you know, as I said, I accept the challenge is uh, something new and then it, it, it open more brain way in different way. So doing what you what we love makes you live longer actually. And the biggest thing is People, a lot of people cannot let go. They hold grudges against somebody. So letting go and forgiveness is what we got to do. If you can let go, you hold the grudges on somebody else, the same thing you're holding on grudges for yourself. So you have to let go. So you get, you're free. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I want to, I want to draw a parallel to something you said also, you know, and you talked about left and right brain and, you know, I think people, what they miss is that the notion of left brain and right brain is that some of us have a, a dominance, like a, a dominant hand or a dominant eye or a dominant foot. You know, I mean, we, we learn that we're right-handed or left-handed. Some of us are ambidextrous, but the idea being you want to use your whole brain. You want to use the sides, your back, the front, the top, the bottom, you know, the whole thing. But um, as an example, I, I studied some martial arts with a different teacher, a different instructor, a different sensei. And I I was kicking the bag and I broke my right foot, my strong foot, you know, or cracked it. I didn't break it, but I cracked the bone in the top of the foot. So I went to him, I, gone to, I went to the doctor and they, you know, said, well, you know, you need to bandage it up and take care of it. And so I went to my instructor and I said, you know, I'm going to have to withdraw from class during this time because I've injured myself. And he said, this is an excellent opportunity for you to learn to make your non-dominant foot stronger and better That's so right. now yeah i mean you know and this i know this is coming you know with you master and grandmaster lee this is 
you know, child slave. But the point was, it was it creates a balance instead of being lopsided and just having one side now exercise the other side so that, you know, so really that breaking of my foot was an opportunity. And this is what you're talking about. You know, when people go through their life, there are experiences and people can hate them, but we get, we get through habits, through rehearsals, through practice, through experiences, we get better at stuff. So whenever anything goes wrong, that is an opportunity. Learn to love it and let go of the hate and things change. So I love I love what you're sharing because it's very powerful. And while people may think it's not that easy to do, it won't be easy to do if they don't do it. <laughs> but if they start doing it, it gets easier. Like when you say I'm playing music and I'm playing the, you know, it just seems impossible at first, but you, know, you have to just like anything else, if you want to achieve something, if you like it, you have to be one become fanatic and then they'll become good at it. Doesn't matter what art you're doing, whether it's music. I like painting. I just finished uh, OK Corral and I, I did I did uh, I I like to collect things too, but I like to share. One of the things that I think uh, before me and you we were in the dark, okay? So we didn't know what to do. We, we just knew, you know, it was a student, but what we don't know. So what happened is somebody shined a light on us. So they enlightened us. So we, we got the tool. And then, so now we got the light, we can shine the light on somebody else who was in the dark, okay? When they were, now when they get a light, they can shine on somebody else in the dark. It goes on forever, circle of light. And, uh, mm. What happened is, uh, okay, Kung Fu is the first art I study. I study with like a whole bunch of instructors and I like everything. So all different style to me is only different movement and I respect them. All have all of them have something to offer, whether grappling, boxing, Jiu Jitsu, Tai Chi, uh, Wing Chun, whatever style, doesn't matter. Okay, some of them are very commercial some of them are not as commercial. Some people open big commercial school. Some people just teaching in the garage, which is okay. Now, one of the things that uh, is fascinating to me is learn what you don't know, because that's that that make you grow. We grow to life instead of just go to life. I personally don't believe in retire, and the retire meaning tie twice, tie and tie again. So then we retire. So I don't see the point. So now I did martial arts for a long time, and then uh, I'm still doing it, and I still do it. And uh, matter of fact, I told you May, uh, May twenty fifth, I'm going to sing, and I'm going to do a demonstration. I'm going to have a booth there, some books and autograph, and I'm giving a seminar also at in the Costa Mesa at the uh, Crown Plaza Hotel. So I, there are three over three hundred Hall of Fame in the country right now. But this one is the oldest one since nineteen seventy six. Jim wow. Thomas, he's been a long time, way before Black Bill. I got so many Hall of Fame, so I appreciate everything. Even though I don't think I deserve it because I'm not competing anymore. I already done my my job, you know. Can I, well, while we're thinking, I would, do you have a web address or a website that people can go to that they might be able to get the information of where you're appearing and when? So that. Uh, yeah, um, we, uh, right now we are doing, once a month, we're doing karaoke, potluck karaoke once a month. And then the 17 is, uh, we're going to, next one is going to be 17 of this month. And then uh, we will post it. I do a lot of uh, things I like to do. Not I cannot go to a lot of things because of time consuming and I just go the one we like, you know? And uh, so we I still have to develop something I like to do internally at home or, you know, like we talk about the guitar, that's important. Um, let me tell you instant, July 30th, July 20th, 1973, I compete at the tournament June Rees tournament in Las Vegas. The same day Bruce Lee died. And we have to 
have a silent a moment. And Mike Stone was there. He's a friend of mine. Mike, you know, he's before Chuck Norris. He's an old timer. And he was with Priscilla Presley. That's how I met her. I can never forget that day because Bruce Lee died and here we go, Priscilla. And Mike, and then I won the grand champion, you know, and then uh, so that was uh, amazing. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about anything like that. Who's going to be what, what kind of things. I'm, it's so much there, but I enjoy certain things and I appreciate, like I'm enjoying talking to you right now. Okay. So Likewise. <laughs> I was um, also, because I'm Lee and I, I know Bruce Lee's uh, ex, uh, his wife, Linda, and then his mom, I used to take her out for dinner. And then Robert Lee, Bruce Lee's uh, brother, and Phoebe, which is in San Francisco, older than Bruce. And then uh, Shannon and Brandon were so young, you know, this, they were just baby when I met them. Wow. So well, they, go ahead, Jim. Go, and they asked me if I was related to Bruce Lee. I told them, yes, 4,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really, uh, there are a lot of Lee's and Korean Lee, American Lee, everybody Lee, but in Chinese, they have Lee Association Wong's Chen Lei Cheng Wong Ho. Chen is number one lineage. The more Chen than anything else, like Jackie Chen. I happen to know, know him too. Chen Lee, number two, Cheng, and then Wong, okay, and Ho, H O, and then in that order. So they had the most. Uh, people is Chen. Okay. Wow. The style called Choi Lei Fat, actually three style combined together, which is my father trained. Choi style, Lee style, and Buddhist style called Choi Lei Fat is Southern style. That's why my father trained. And I was watching him work out when I was two. And my grandmother took me to the opera, which they have what they call stage Kung Fu. So that's my first impression of the martial art um, 70 some years ago. Wow. But I tell you, um, if you don't mind, I tell you the reason why I train. Oh, okay. please. But, but, but before you do, I, I, I did, is there a web address that you can say? Is there like, is there ericlee.com or Grandmaster Lee? Okay. That we can share because we'll put it. We'll put it in the description wherever this place is showing. But for yeah, the they, um, Grandmaster Eric Lee on YouTube, and then uh, they see a lot of things that I sing, do martial arts, or some movie, all kinds of things in it. That is YouTube, and second is ericlee.com. There you go. That's I have that for 30 years now. Right. One of yeah, the earlier yeah, I understand. Um, awesome. Uh, so you were going to tell us that's great. So ericlee.com and Grandmaster Eric Lee on YouTube. And now you're going to tell us why you train. Okay. I do that. Yeah. First of all, my father told me that don't go to a tournament because I might get beat up. As a father, he concerned my well being. Okay. Second, uh, Certain one, certain teacher told me not to compete at the tournament, and because when I compete, they many people back up, and then dirt. When I first go to the tournament, and then uh, everybody was wearing white, and in China in old days, I remember when you wear white is somebody grieving, somebody died. So I said, I was wondering who died. <laughs> So I didn't know what happened. And then when I wore the uniform was black, the guys were laughing at me. Why, why are you wearing a pajama to the event like this? So, so I, uh, and then the other thing is that when I, some of the instructor, I cannot mention name here. He said, uh, many of them, and then you bastardizing our traditional art by going out there in the, open tournament. So I said, okay, I see you later. I bowed to them and I left. I never came back. So, and the other thing is when I was in the um, middle school, some big bully just chopped me on the neck like that, chopped me on the neck and I almost died. 
So that gave me a lot of motivation to really do self-defense. That was in Oakland, California. Wow. And then he, he, I don't know, he's still here. I for, That's so long ago. But I, today, if I ever see him, I, I want to thank him for giving me the motivation for training. Yeah, again, again, I mean, what you just said is what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Sometimes the hardship or the disappointment or the tough times or the brutal times in our life are really the beginning of a whole new life for us. Because had that not happened, you might never have trained. Yeah, that's true. Um, Maybe, when, but, you know. when I first uh, teaching was 1968 in YWCA on, on Webster Street in Oakland, Chinatown. My first student, I was very proud of her. I only teach fighting, nothing else, no form, no weapon. Her name is Maria. And guess what? As an instructor, you don't want your student get beat up. So mm -hmm. she was only 16, now she's she's 67. Oh, wow. And then what happened? She was holding two bags of grocery and then uh, people tried to rob her. Two, two girls, and she knocked them out, both of them, on the sidewalk, just like that. And I was very proud of her because she's only 16, and two big girls tried to rob her, and then she just knocked, knocked them out, just like that. But now, um, you know, as you get older, you go beyond, uh, yeah, of course, we, we learn self-defense. Anybody can be beat. In reality, if you hit by an eighteen wheeler, and you're gonna get hurt or go to the hospital or die, that's it. Doesn't matter if you're a world champion. But I do respect people have to put the time and discipline to create the art. Uh, not necessarily martial. If you want to be a good football player, you're gonna to have to need a good coach, and then you need to. If you want to learn how to paint, you you try or get the instructor. If you want to learn music that people know about music. Um, I like everything. I don't I don't have any problem. May I may I play a song? Yes, but before you do, may I may I piggyback on what you just said? You you know you you made some really wonderful points and um the thing that I want to ask you okay because you spent all these years learning a system, but learning systems, I mean, many different forms. You're known as one of the fastest martial arts. I mean, I, I, the accolades that you have are things like, you know, Bruce Lee was really, really fast. And then there's then there's Eric Lee, who's really, really, really fast. You know, uh, you're the king of kata. You've tried all these different styles, but you understand the building of those habits, the physical habits, the ability to have a body memory so that when something happens you know your 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 body memory takes over you don't have to think about it and go what am i going to do next yeah natural it, yes it becomes natural so here's 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 i'm making a point to ask a question football players who become champion football players know the value of training and rehearsal and practice athletes or all athletes olympic athletes martial artists like yourself know the value of it musicians who aspire to be really big know how how many hours they put into practice to become the very best painters paint and do whatever they can in order to become talented artists it's it's uh, some business people do the same thing but so many people in life just kind of take things like you know uh, they they get they get hit by you know financial problems or emotional problems or somebody leaves them or or you know what psychological problems like life happens to them instead of them being prepared and having developed the natural habits to uh, think their way through success and feel their way through success and take the action if necessary. They just kind of let things happen because they don't, they don't know better, but you know better and you've helped other people to discover that through training and conditioning or, or like the 16 year old who responded and, and did as now you said 67. I mean, the value of conditioning yourself and developing the habits for uh, personal success and for being able to navigate the world, um, I think are something that is few actually master because they don't have the dedication of someone like you. Well, I think all of us need something to inspire us. There's a reason to do what you love to do. Okay, and then fire that spark in in your mind, in your life. You got somebody got to encourage you. 
I have, I, I will mention name here. And one time, uh, I'm not going to name anybody here. Okay, this person is intellectual, not very good shape. The instructor, one of the instructor, tell him to do the exercise. And this guy is not very good shape. And then he said, I can't do the exercise. I think I'm going to die. And then that instructor is, wasn't very encouraged. He said, why don't you drop dead right now? That's not very good. That you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to get to his mind. He's, he's slowly and where his mind is, where he's at, and teach him right from there and encourage him all the way, and then he get better. We need encouragement. So that's why we, if somebody inspire me, I'm trying to inspire other people. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's it. And uh, we need to, if somebody depressed, you say something, leave him up. You already done your job. And then if he's depressed, you tell him, you look terrible. You look more deep. And then you, you're going to depress. It's a terrible thing. You you don't do that. You, you just leave him up. Give him something. It, a word of therapy is the best known to anybody. Mm, beautiful. It's very simple. Before uh, before you, uh, uh, am I interrupting you? Because I don't want to interrupt. No, no, you're not interrupting me. Okay. Well, before before you do sing and play, um, can we talk a, just a little bit about? I mean, you you've done 150 movies. You worked with some really impressive talent. I think that if the audience doesn't know who you are um, by and your accomplishments, th that they might understand more of who you are by who you who you've worked with, who you've helped train or coach or done stunts for. As you said earlier, you know Jackie Lee and I mean Jackie Chan. So. Um, you do you mind sharing some of the, the well i i like like i said i like everything i happen to like people and i happen to like how what kind of exercise what you think how you think to improve your the health what to eat what not to eat and then and then the how to i i've been blessed be giving the time and space to create things i love to do and I, I like many things. And then, uh, so I, I feel all of us need encouragement. You find the people lift you up instead of bring you down. And bring, um, I just finished reading the book, Dolly Parton. Okay. And then I, I also finished reading the book, Michelle Obama. They're very encouraging. And then of course I study a lot on film. I used to be a teacher at UCLA. I teach movie stunt fighting because I know the camera and all the stuff and I got the, and uh, so, so I'm kind of, I have a card called discover. So I discover what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. And uh, um, so I just, there's so much fun. There's so many things to do. Like we're having this uh, potluck karaoke. I told my friends, uh, come on down. You have to RSVP. Just forget your trouble for a while and relax. You need to balance. You cannot keep keep thinking your problem. If you keep repeating, that will never go away. So you need balance. You if you if you accomplish something, you reward yourself. Take a vacation. Do something fun for a change. Yin and Yang is. Otherwise, you keep on going. You go, you're going to be in the number one financial people in the world. You might die before that. So mm -hmm. take the time. You reward yourself by take a vacation, have some fun, relax. Only when you relax, your chi will flow. That's an excellent point. That's an excellent there point. That's why sometimes you do like one guy, I taught him many years ago, he does... I. You know, he does a uh, hard style, really hard, but you know, it's very tense. I said, you gotta relax. And then so I, I, I show him Tai Chi and he, his martial art got better because now he's more relaxed. Now, if you ask your people, people is because everything um, that the out there on TV, they ask you buy a car, buy this house, have the money, this and that. And so you keep uh, trying to get what you don't have. 
you might have to sacrifice your life for it. But so I, I think it's important to, to know the balance. Enough is enough. Yin and yang. But most of the system that we have now is more yang than yin. So we need to have balance. You can't just uh, go, 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 go and get what you want. So don't forget, not, uh, if you don't have your health, and I know we're not going to be here forever, but if you don't have your health, um, no matter how much you got, you're going to, and you got to take care of the balance. Your health, maybe take care of your finance, maybe take care of your creativity. So, um, so I think she be balanced. I like, I like telegraphy. I like painting. I like singing. I like film. I like to share. I like to talk to people sometimes. And I do a lot, lots of uh, meditation, or uh, you know how to take care of body, our mind, those things, qigong and things like that. You know, so I don't know that answer your question. <laughs> no, it, it it didn't answer the question that I asked, but it did answer a lot of questions. That, okay, what? Try it again. Sure. Maybe I went off too far. No, no, it Go was beautiful. To, to the question, yeah, it was absolutely beautiful and. And 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 coming from a grandmaster, it was absolutely poignant and and perfect for the moment. No, I, I was asking if you didn't mind sharing some of your uh, movie co-stars or people you've produced or helped or you know when we're sitting and having lunch, you know we we talk some of our friends. The movie, the movie to me is entertainment. Right. Okay, it's an illusion. You know that, right? Absolutely. Okay, um, I do know a few people um, that quite a. They're high profile people. And uh, I respect them because it takes a lot of hard work to, to get what they want. As you know, the show business is a dog eat dog business. It's mm -hmm. very tough. And uh, everybody trying to be a movie star, try to do this, a sell script, a director, whatever. And then uh, I know many of them, I don't want to mention too much name. I don't know, they might not like it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I, yeah, I, they, they're a big name. They are a list. No, I, I I understand that. I mean, it, it's it's protecting the you know your friends and your colleagues and things like that. I I get it. I I typically never talk about my clients you know by name, so I I personally uh, understand that. Um, so in lieu of that, okay, go ahead. Uh, we were in Chinatown. You said I choreographed you know some scenes here in this particular location. Right. We. I remember. Yes. Well, okay. I, I can talk about that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was a Don Wilson's movie. Don the Dragon Wilson. I believe, uh, I'm not sure, there was Ring of Fire or something. That was so many years ago. And then uh, one person I told you, and I tried, him, he's supposed to meet us for dim sum at Golden Dragon oh, yeah. Restaurant. Yeah. Neil... Neil, uh, Jason McNeil, and uh, I call him to invite him to the uh, the singing, you know, just eat and meet some people, you know, and uh, socialize. I have some comedian, that's what they do, and they come on, tell some jokes, okay? And then uh, people sing, and they are shy, they can hum, no problem. And then, uh, so anyway, those, uh, celebrities some of them you might see them on the on the eric uh, grandmaster eric lee on youtube and some of them you might not because some of them don't want to they don't want to be butter let's put it this way sometimes some of the people become a top and then they feel they feel they shouldn't because now they can they lose the privacy you know, I, I had a conversation with another friend of mine um, right before I left. We were we were sitting the the day before I got back on a plane and fl and left Los Angeles for a while, and um, you know about the paparazzi and about the the paparazzi. lack of freedom that people experience, and and I'm this is just my opinion, but I'm going to put it out there and people can like it or not like it. I don't know when or why it became acceptable that if you're in public life, your life should be open to everybody and everything you do. And people can peek over your walls and take pictures of you 24 seven or follow you around or chase you down the street. I think that public servant, politician, religious leader, actor, banker, 
bookkeeper, doctor, farmer, whatever, should be entitled to the same freedoms as everyone else. And just because you make a living as an actor or recording artist or whatever, you shouldn't have your your privacy invaded. You know, they say, well, you wanted to be a star and now you're a star. This, this is what comes with it. But I do find that offensive. I do find that it, I mean, and there's so many people who suffer as a result, you know, because they can't go anywhere without an entourage or protection nowadays because of, you know, the, the world we live in. So that's just an opinion. I mean, I understand. But, I understand. but it is, but it is, it is something that comes with fame nowadays that, that, yeah, you but know, you're when you and fame. I were in the, when you and I were in the seventies, you know, there was no, it was, it was nothing. If somebody had, you know, an event, you didn't hear about it. You might read about it in the trades the next day, or somebody would call you up and say, "Hey, I'm at such and such a corner. This is happening. Come on down." And if you if you happen to be home to pick up your phone, you could do that, but you didn't have a cell phone. So, I mean, in other words, nowadays everything is instant, you know, and and people are are being shadowed by photographers or or the press, as opposed to being able to live their lives without without that kind of worry. We didn't have that. I mean, there were times when. When you know we've been surrounded by press for whatever you know junk, whatever job we were doing, but I, I'm just saying it's a very different world where everything is is you know out there for people that you know it's anyway. I I go on too far far too long. No, that's okay. Let me tell, uh, share with your audience. Uh, uh, 1986, uh, I was invited to Chile with Mr. Ed Parker. Okay, and then uh, we met the president of Chile. We went there, and then uh, we we got all this video and everything. So we were on TV all over the place, and then and two hours later we went walk on the street, and we got mobbed because every television in South America was there. I we we have to get back to the limo by the way because we cannot because we we're getting mobbed. And then uh, we we did a uh, a Tula Petit. I can mention his name. He's not here anymore. Ed, Mr. Ed Parker is not here anymore. Matter of fact, I got his picture on here. And then when we uh, we we have to get back, and when we uh, do a show, we did three Vineyard Del Mar, and then we went to three different city, and then these people were host, ho so hospitable. They put us up. On the shoulder, they take your shoes and they they give you the jacket. They take your they want your. I was we were just overwhelmed, and uh, Mr. Parker was a bigger guy, and then uh, so they have about three four hundred uh, people holding hand, so make an aisle we can walk through. But once we get out of the car, boom, everything broke. So everything, so we were so tired because very hot up there, and then we have to sit down in the room for a while before we get on. To the show and they got few thousand people waiting outside is so out completely inside and then uh, that time only campo exists nothing else so anything we do uh like i do uh tadashi yamashita was a sensei and then uh, i said dominique valer from french kickboxer number one in that country we we just uh, anything we do is like magic for them because they never seen it. There was 86 and they would only see Kimball, no, mm -hmm. nothing else. The person in charge of the sport, only Kimball, no Taekwondo, no other system, that's it. So we were just uh, uh, like a Beatles. And then, uh, so I don't want to do that because it's, it's too much. So I don't want to be like that. Now I can still walk down the street every now and then. A few people, they autograph, they, they they ask you this and that. And that's okay, but if you lose, you can even get a house. That's not good. Well, let me ask you this, and then and then we'll we'll wrap up with you singing, pretty much. But but well, let I'm, me. I, I have the the CD here, so it's uh, professionally recorded. Hopefully, oh. your audience can listen. Yeah, let's happen. Um, so what I wanted to ask, we were driving through Hollywood and I asked you something about forms and martial arts and styles. And you've been around long enough to say, you know, some people think this is the best form and that's the best form. But you have a different opinion about the martial arts styles today than you than many, many people do. And you were talking about in terms of movement. Well, I think everybody has something to offer. 
And then uh, I think the true essence is one is not the skill, not the martial skill, is the personality and martial ethic. Ethic is in the person. That's the other part. You cannot just fight and beat somebody up, but you have to respect who they are. You cannot go there and just because you got powerful kick or punch, you can knock somebody out. But in reality, anybody can get hurt. If somebody hit me and knock me down by two by four, and then uh, I don't know, am I allowed to talk about it? If somebody knocked me two by four, what style is that? We call <laughs> Home Depot. <laughs> indeed, indeed. If, if um, I walk down uh, the street, I hit by a 18 wheeler, what style is that? 18 wheeler. And that's reality. So I do respect people that is put a hard work and perseverance, discipline to become who they are. But we got to go beyond the identity. That's great. That's great. Now, uh, I guess I have a follow-up question. You know, you're known as King of Kata, and you've studied all these different styles. And you came from, you know, having learned, you know, when you were young, and then you adapted to all these. So you learn a form or a style or a particular practice with, you know, that's got a name and a body of, you know, a history to it. And then you're going to learn another one and then you're going to learn another one. And then you learn another one. And you learned all these things. And when it comes to King of Kata, in, in, I assume most of these styles have different Kata sequences that you would have to learn or master. What is it that, that allows you to, go from one practice to another practice to adapt and to adjust and to be flexible so that you can acquire the skill in the new practice? Well, number one, King of Kata has nothing to do with Jimmy Kata. <laughs> good. good enough. <laughs> number two, I uh, I crowned it that the title by a sports writer. I did not put myself in that one, but I stuck with it. Hmm. And then I'm really interested in learning the art. That art is two different parts. If you learn how to hit, you have to learn how to heal. So healing is part of it. So mm. um, I'm very interested because healing is not only medicine. It's the mind. Your, your brain is in charge of your life, depending how you use it. Okay? <laughs> and uh, so... But I'm really, everybody know the people in the martial art world, King of Kata, is, they think I'm only interested in form. That's a lot more than going into form. You know, I'm interested in everything. Okay, so healing, but when you get older, you're interested, you become more wise. People call them, some people call somebody wise because they know something you didn't know. That is all. You go to school, you pay the tuition. What? Why you? Why are you doing that? You you need information. You you exchange your time and maybe a fee to get what you like. Now we got cell phone. The whole library is on the cell phone or computer. Okay. Now what? Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, uh, many people who did the fighting stuff. They call martial art movement. Now. We don't have to do the same thing. We can do CGI. Nobody get hurt. At my age, if I want to do something like do a major stunt, which I will use CGI because I can't afford to get hurt anymore. I already hurt enough in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it. So we, we use uh, now AI can write a script and even make music for you, just like that. In two hours, they can give you a script. You hire somebody, takes a long time. So in the old, when I first learned the music many years ago, uh, I was interested in all kinds of music, blues, jazz, oldie, um, uh, opera, when I went, to, I called San Francisco Opera, they, they said, what kind of experience you have? I have none, I said to them. So they shine me off. They tell them, get off. <laughs> I'm not, we're not interested in teaching you. So I said, okay. 
Now, since you can go to YouTube and they teach you same thing, property, all this stuff, and you know, all these people that is a great singer, you can learn to listen and then you can learn to play. We have a lot more freedom to do things nowadays compared to like, if you and I were born in 1800, we can do it. There's no car. <laughs> There's no cell phone. There's no, you can't do this. If you're a mu musician, you're a servant to the rich. Mm. Well, that's, um, I, I do appreciate, and we're, and we're gonna um, do the song here in a moment, but I do appreciate what you just said. You know, you have to know your limits as well as, um, your limitations as well as that you're limitless. Now you're, you're limitless, but you're also saying, I don't wanna get hurt. So I, I know my limit. In that regard, and so I would use this technology in order to do it. I would use CGI or or AI. Uh, that is wisdom because you know a young person might just go, "Oh, let me do it," and and find out that uh, they encounter the eighteen wheeler or or the two by four. Um, so that you know, I mean, what I'm what I'm trying to get at is there's an appreciation. You know, you do a lot of stuff. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff physically that many other people can't do. You're in better shape than a lot of people who are half your age. Some you people. Know, you know, in some, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? And that's because you dedicated yourself to it. But also, I love the awareness, you know, that you said, if you punch, you also have to heal. Or if you get punched, you have to heal. And and to have that awareness, and you said the brain, you know, is, is so, I mean, we are natural healers. You know, our body has natural healers, natural energy, and then we can, right. we can kind of step on it, or we can in, encourage it, you know, and, and learning how to encourage it through practices like the practices that you have embraced or the practices you've shared uh, or the practices you practice, um, you know, is is to keep healthy in mind and body and spirit mm -hmm. and pocketbook. <laughs> well, I think um, most people are just trying to, uh, most people are trying to survive. Right. Yeah. Pay the bills and things like that, which is, uh, it's, um, but, People have to do what they got to do to survive. And then I think a lot of people, they want more than what they have. And we need air, we need food, we need water. We need a place to that keep warm and nice, simple. But you don't need a $25, 30000000 million home. That's for the ego, for some people. Okay. But if you if you afford it, then um if you this is what you want it's okay now we don't have to like everybody not everybody have to like us either so that's okay hopefully more people like us than enemy hate us that's all a good point excellent point i i have always always said i've been blessed i'm lucky i have things i've lost things that's been my life i was up and down and up and down and up oh. and down yeah, but it's been, a, it's been a good life. But if I lost my home and my car and everything else, there's always Ocean Avenue. There's always the beach, you know, on the western yeah, coast. Yeah. There's a place to stay that's warm, you know, and you can find shelter. So it doesn't doesn't bother me. I know that, I, you know, that that I'll get through it and say I don't want that to happen. I mean, I'm not saying you know that that I'm seeking it. But if if worse came to worse, you know. And some people look at it like it's over, you know, it's just everything is everything has gone wrong. And you can't so we have to be strong just because sometimes in life we got knocked down. Just get up and go again. Okay. When you, you go down and then it's not your war is not over. <laughs> so you just get up and try it again. You know, who doesn't fail? To me, even though you fail something is still you still won. You know why? Because you learn from it. Yeah, yeah. That's so, my philosophy. But what I love about you, Eric, is that, or at Grandmaster Lee, is that you, um, you're a kick-ass martial artist with a history of of doing all these things and working in all these ways, and you have these gentle practices like calligraphy and painting and music. Oh, yeah, it's fun. And you go through life with a song in your heart. Yeah, you just do what you what your heart desire and make you happy. Do it. When you're happy, if you we do understand certain things are good for us, 
and then uh, you stay that way. People sense that you rub that on people, and they if you have the right people, they rub that on you. So uh, when I see somebody is repeat what they don't like, I can see it. They repeat what they don't like. It's going to stay that way until they change the focus. That's yeah. all. It's simple. Now, um, the song I'm going to play, uh, okay, it's by Righteous Brother. It's called Unchained Melody. Okay, I recorded that song. I'm not going to sing. I'm just record, play the CD for you. Okay. And then uh, when they first go into South, and then uh, where they got the name is, uh, and then Bobby and uh, it doesn't sound too good. So the guy, when he finished the song, one guy said, righteous, and the other said, brother. So they stuck to it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I hope this worked. Okay, it worked. Oh, my way, my wow. I am hunger for your humble touch. I love can you move the closer closer to the microphone or something it's dropping out it's 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 not coming through very clear it's it's kind of it's deleting okay. deleting it's okay. uh i can talk okay <laughs> to me um well i know but what i heard but I could hear, I would like to hear, I mean, and I mean this sincerely, I would like to hear more. I would like to be able to hear that song uh, as it, it, it played in the way that it deserves to be played, because it's just not coming through our, our, our recording here. Uh, unless unless I'm incorrect in it, it, you know, and I find out once we look at this recording that something played, but I, I, could, I couldn't hear a lot of the notes. I see. Um, Grandmaster Eric Lee on YouTube, you can hear better. And and you have the songs there, yeah. So oh, there I have go. many songs. Like... Like that's that's one of them. But I okay. also uh, wrote three songs already. So you're composing as well. Yes. Cool. And yeah. and do you yeah, compose? I mean, I how do you? Compose, but do you, do you compose on on a on an instrument like a guitar or piano or? You no, can... I had the backing track, but I'm learning that. Yeah, I have thirty six instrument, but I. I'm not good at all of them. I just uh, basic uh, a little guitar, a little. My first instrument was saxophone. Really? Yeah, that's because you have to clean it all the time and the reed and everything. So it's too much work. So now the guitar is so is smaller. It's you can take it with you, but I cannot take my keyboard. It's too big. Mm -hmm. So I just um, but I want to master the basic. Uh, some musician, um, they can sing, but they do the basic chords. But the advanced one, like Carlos Santana, those guys are really, really good. You know, I mean, uh, but I am not in interested to become a top musician, get number one on the billboard and thing like that. I'm just enjoying it. Well, and and then then that's fair enough. I mean, if you enjoy more things in life, you have a life you enjoy more. Yeah, why not? Because we're only here for a short time. There's so much, so many things available to us. Well, you said it earlier, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna use your your comment, and that is, if you go camping, hopefully you're doing things that you like when you're camping. So if you're living here and you're only camping on the planet, then maybe you just take the time to enjoy the things you can. Hopefully we live a long time. Um, I'm, I cannot tell a lot of my friends uh, gone before me and a couple of them, you, you probably know, uh, Bob Wall from right. Into the Dragon. Uh, I know the whole cast in the Into the Dragon, all of them, John Saxon, Jim Kelly. I know all these guys. 
Yeah. And then, uh, I was not in that movie that was filmed in Hong Kong. And um, so, but as far as I'm concerned, all these people I knew, uh, they did impact on my my book. So what I'm saying to you, if everything we turn to paper, it will be a book, right? Well, that's a book. Uh, that is about only one fourth of my experience. That's a good book. I hope you like it. No, it is. It's a very good book. And like I said, I'm only about three. I'm starting my third chapter because I, you, you gave it to me the other day. I, I started reading it on the plane, and and uh, you know we landed, so I'm I've been reading it here at the house. But uh, it's a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book. I encourage everyone to get it. You can get it wherever books are sold, Borders, Walmart, everything. But it's easiest to get on Amazon. Or go to ericlee.com and go to... No, uh, Amazon, uh, they have what they call uh, Kindle book. Kindle. Yeah. They can do that. If they don't want to have a hard copy, they get Kindle. You can, you know, they, they you can... I think Kindle, they can play for you. You just listen, right? You know, that's the interesting thing. I mean, there is, there is yeah, I think that on Kindle, you can now have voice or text to voice and you can just play it. Yeah, and anything is possible now. You know, you know, a friend of mine, I, I don't know him really well, but I got to know him. His name is Jim Stovall. He mm -hmm. wrote a book called The Gift. He's blind. He was blinded. He wanted to be an athlete and he went blind as a teenager. But he's the one who created the narration for film. Oh. The narration. So that's his company that started that. So now with Kindle and, and you know, I mean, there's, there's book services you can purchase books, you know, on, on like books on tape. But I believe Kindle now has uh, the, the the advance where you can you can listen to it because there are many people who can't who can't see who need that service. And I believe it's a free service with Kindle. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, um, we, we have a couple minutes, just a couple minutes left before we we have a hard stop on the on the recording here. So I would love to give you the floor for final words. Any final words? I want to do this again. I mean, we can have a series sure. of conversations, you know, and 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 whenever whenever time permits for you. But I, I would like to do this again. But to close us out, in order to say goodbye to who's ever watching now, what what message would you like to leave with them? Sure as well as the invita invitation to connect with you or to come to your events or to see you in the future, well, what would you like to say as a, as a closing comment? I would say that thinking is not enough. You have to take action. That's an old saying. A turtle never goes anywhere unless he sticks his neck out. Amen. You must do instead of think. Beautiful. I hope, Grandmaster. Go. I hope uh, they enjoy the interview. Um, you conduct a very good interview. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, no, I only, I only uh, am able to converse with somebody who knows their subject. So you, it's, it's you who shine, and uh, I'm glad that we're here together. I'm glad that we're friends, and I look forward to uh, more times together here in person and everything else that we can accomplish while we're here, uh, camping on the planet. <laughs> Uh, there's so much to do. I, I sometimes I have to have a good sense of humor to understand what's going on. Sometimes people take everything too seriously. That's going to lock up the chi. Relax. <laughs> Relax and have fun. Amen. Yeah, take care. Okay. Thank you very Good much. Compliment. So, okay. Thank you very much. Here's what